welcome to the next project. This is episode three in my Harley Benton T-style Acoustasonic inspired mod project series. This episode is full of a bunch of stuff that did not need to be done, but I did it anyway. I'm working on the neck in this episode, uh, pulling frets, mm -hmm. no good reason, the frets were fine. I'm working on the fingerboard, no good reason, it's fine. In fact, it's a really tough fingerboard and it's glued on very well. Ooh, gave away a, something there. You're gonna have to stay tuned to see what I do. Also did some work on the headstock. I'll keep it low so you can't see what else I did. Ah, so why don't I stop talking and let's just get to it and start the next project. It's all pulled out uh, really well. Uh, they're not glued in at all. I didn't have to use heat or anything. I used two tools, a little pair of wire nippers. Uh, you can get it at Amazon or Harbor Freight if you're near Harbor Freight. They're like $3 a pair. Uh, they have a nice sharp little beveled uh, cutting surface and it works well to get under the fret to help pop them loose. Uh, and the other tool is a fret puller from FastCap. And that's a new tool to me. So I was giving it a test run and it worked pretty well. Um, since these frets were not glued in, it's kind of hard to tell how well it will work on um, a more difficult neck. But for this, it worked very well. Uh, the frets, uh, I think, are a little bit on the small side. I like something a little bit bigger. And the main reason I pulled the frets was so I could get to the fingerboard. And what I'm hoping to do is clean up the fingerboard that came with the kit get it sanded out nice, smooth, give it some polish so it looks nice. Um, as it comes, it looks like a manufactured product, a, a bunch of laminated pieces of whatever it is stuck together. So I'm going to try and polish it up. If that doesn't work, I am going to remove the fingerboard and replace it with something else. But what will that be? I don't know. Let's continue with the next project. I started out by mounting the neck into my high-tech neck cradle beam. I clamped it to the bench, took uh, some sandpaper to it, and started whittling away. And, you know, there's just no way to polish up whatever this uh, finger mortar material is. It wants to retain those fine parallel lines that run the length of um, the fingerboard, or the neck. And it's not really wood grain. You know, I, I keep saying I think it's a manufactured product and the more I worked on it the more I'm like yeah it's a manufactured product. I think it was wood at one time as um, I'm chipping away at it here I was looking at the uh, the bits and pieces of it and it, there is like wood fiber in it I just don't know what it is but the good news is it is a tough fingerboard material and whatever glue they use to mount it on is even tougher. It's not a regular wood glue. It might be some kind of epoxy or space shuttle tile glue. I don't know what it is. It's tough. Um, so if you do get one of these kits, don't worry about the fingerboard ever falling off. It will not. up with an idea for the shape of the headstock um, was a little tricky you know it, it arrives six on a side boat or shape which would work actually there's a company I should look up who it is that basically uses that shape for their headstock and they're really expensive guitars but I, I tried a lot of different things I was thinking even about a three by three um, five by one um, 
when I cut this off, I, I had looked at some of the uh, Harley Benton shapes, and they have this kind of bird beak shape. And I was like, well, since this is a Harley Benton, I think I'll pick up on that idea. Um, my shape does not exactly match theirs, but I think it's um, in homage to what they did or do. So, you know, I, I stole a little bit from them for their kit. And it turned out pretty nice. Um, you know, I ended up with an extra hole, and I was like, oh, I could have made a seven string, but I can't even play six strings, so why would I want seven? I had a piece of uh, the wood that I cut off and uh, made a dowel out of it, turned it down on a little bitty uh, pen lathe that I have, uh, glued it in, and it actually turned out really well. But you're gonna see I can't leave that alone. Move right along on the neck, and I've got the headstock to this point of four by two tuner configuration. I've plugged what was the old B tuner post hole, uh, made a maple dowel, got that in there. But I don't really like the look of uh, that dowel. So now I want to figure out a way to hide the whole thing front and back. I've thought about a lot of different ideas, um, and what I'm gonna do is a little bit crazy, which this whole process would be crazy. There's no reason to have done that uh, or this. So might as well continue with the craziness. I am going to cut an inset and then put a, a mahogany veneer inset on the front and back, I hope. This is uh, out of my ballpark, out of my wheelhouse, out of my knowledge bank out of my experience bag of tricks but that doesn't stop me so let's tear into the headstock and hopefully make it not bad Well, the easy part where I draw on the headstock with a pencil is over. And now I have to try to figure out how to do this whole process. Um, I'm not a wood carver by any means. Uh, I have a lot of the wrong tools and some of them are not even sharp. So um, I was um, ability and mentally and whatever else challenged going into this um, I got a few nicks in it that I need to figure out how to fix. Uh, overall though, it, it turned out pretty good. And it didn't take me a whole week to get it done either, which I was kind of surprised that when I got started on this, I was like, oh, this is gonna take me forever. But it only took me maybe an hour and a half to cut both sides out like that. This part made me glad that I stayed awake um, doing arts and crafts in elementary school. Um, when I started doing this, I was like, how am I gonna figure out how to make an inset for this? And then I had like a second grade moment. I was like, I know what to do. I'll just kind of crush the paper in there and trace it with my fingernail. Gluing and clamping the veneer on the back of the headstock was actually pretty easy and I really kind of used that as a testing point. For the front, I have that uh, scoop shape which stumped me for a few minutes. Um, that's why I did the back first. But I have this uh, thin piece of sign material. It's like a, some kind of a plastic. And I just heated it up with um, a heat gun. Kind of formed it to shape. Used a piece of foam, uh, high density foam, even though somebody told me it's not high density foam, and uh, clamped it in place and it really smashed the veneer right to the shape of the headstock really well.
I looked at a number of different materials for a new fingerboard. Um, I have some rich light. I didn't really want to replace a black fingerboard with another black fingerboard. And I also have some rosewood, which I'm saving for another project. I had a couple pieces of maple. One was very vanilla in visual flavor. The other had a nice flame pattern to it. So I went to the oven and baked it up and it looked really good, but it also had a twist and I decided I didn't want to add a twist to the, uh, the neck which it probably wouldn't have been a problem, but I played it safe. So I went to my local exotic wood store and found a piece of leopard wood, which I have never used before. And uh, I believe it is a toxic wood, so you have to be careful with the sanding dust. Uh, here I'm doing the fret slotting with my custom uh, slotting jig, and it took me 15 minutes and 22 seconds to cut 23 fret slots. That's no record at all. If you happen to watch my GGBO 2020 um, build project, you're about to see me trying uh, something that I did for the first time on that project. I am going to clamp the uh, fingerboard in place using a big rubber band. This um, rubber band clamping is uh, nothing new, I guess. It's kind of new to me. I've, this is only the second uh, fingerboard I've clamped in this fashion. And what I do, uh, you know, like any other clamping method, you get uh, your mating surfaces good and clean. Uh, I sanded both surfaces with, I think it was 100 grit paper to roughen them up just a little bit. Um, I use a drill bit uh, through one of the fret slots, just a hair smaller than a, uh, a thumbtack. And I use the thumbtacks as my centering guides. So when I drop the fingerboard back on the neck, it fits perfectly. And I wrap it like crazy with a big rubber band. And it took me right at six minutes from spreading the glue to finishing the hog tie of the rubber band to uh, install the fingerboard on the neck. And I let it dry overnight because when I did this, it was pretty late. But uh, it's a pretty quick process. And I think if I continue to practice it, it will uh, go a little bit quicker. I, I'd imagine I can get a fingerboard installed, clamped on in about five minutes with no clamps. Thank you all for uh, sticking with me through this journey of the episode, seeing what I've done to this neck, uh, needlessly done to this neck. It's turned out really nice. Uh, I'm just hoping people will get an idea they can do anything they want with a kit. And I know kits get a bad rap a lot of times, but you know what? It's just a starting point. Do whatever you want to it. Put it together and play it or take it apart and cut it up. All are good. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Please ring the bell, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Please leave me comments. Let me know where you live. I like finding that stuff out too. That's pretty cool. Anyway, be safe, take care, and hope you're back for the next episode.